Yay! I am coming on live to talk about my dental implant and teeth extraction experience, okay? Um, I <clears throat> have a lot that I'm going to talk about. I don't know if anyone wants to grab a pen and paper and jot down notes because I went through the entire experience this past year and I have had uh, this, this procedure performed uh, three months ago, okay? So I'm, I'm still healing up, still healing up. Um, you can't get you can't get an exper or, or a procedure done like this and think it's going to heal overnight. Um, so I'm going to talk the, about the difference between dentures versus uh, bridges, and I'm going to talk about uh, <clears throat> d dental implants. I'm going to talk about zygomatic implants versus uh, sinus lifts and bone grafting, and I'm going to talk about where I went. And um, I'm going to start right from the very beginning. And I'm also going to talk about what's really important, what questions to really uh, be asking, okay? So what things really stand stood out to me. Um, number one, I always follow my intuition, as you all know. <laughs> I follow my gut feeling. So I knew that this procedure needed to be done because of period periodontal uh, disease. Uh, which erodes away your gum tissue and your bone also starts to go. Um, and so what do you do when you don't have the foundation? Now, if you have the foundation and you've got a lot of bone in your mouth, fantastic. You're well ahead of the rest of us, okay? <laughs> um, <clears throat> this is still a fantastic procedure uh, to have done, though if you do have bone in your mouth, you'll probably just get regular implants, uh, which I also have. Uh, you probably won't be getting the zygomatic implants. Um, the cheekbones are your zygoma, your zygo, zygoma uh, uh, bone is right here, okay? So when we talk about zygomatic implants, we're talking about implants that go up into this bone and they bypass your sinuses. Um, everything is measured to such a degree and it's shown to you on a big giant flat screen TV, a uh, massive. Um, so you see exactly what they're measuring and what you're able to have and what you're not. Um, but the good news is I thought I had massive bone loss, but they put these implants in for people that have half the amount of bone in their mouth that I did do, right? So I was like, what? So if you really have a lot of bone loss, this is the option. It is absolutely the option. Um, I was really stunned by that because I mean, I have very little bone, I thought, but they said, oh, we can put these in with even less bone than what you have oh, and half the amount. I was like, wow. Okay, so let's start from the very beginning. What, where do you go and what do you do when you need to get this type of dental work done, okay? Um, first of all, I called around uh, and they would ask me to get a detailed scan um, and then I would mail it to them or send it to them. Uh, some places were like, that's not how we do business. Uh, it is in the 20th century. <laughs> And other places were like, okay, thank you, we got it. And they would give their feedback as to what they felt that I needed. The places that I called or contacted uh, who didn't give me a price right away, who weren't helpful right away, who didn't give me the answers right away, I bypassed them. I don't have time for that. Like if somebody's not gonna be transparent about what this costs and what it entails, buy. I don't have time for that. So I look for transparency, uh, definitely look for transparency. <clears throat> and the other thing that I look for, and here's another question you'll want to ask, how many of these types of procedures do you do in the, in the clinic, in, the, in, in your establishment? Because if they're doing one a month, probably not the best place to go to. Okay, so if they're predominantly focusing on other types of cases, but they don't do all on four, 
zygomatic implants more than like, you know, one a month or something like that. No, that was also a red flag for me. In the very beginning, I knew I had to get this done and uh, it was uh, me being guided strongly to someone that could do zygomatic implants. And it was, it just kept coming into my head. And then I was like, okay, so there's two different ways of doing this. And I'm being guided to this way, which is, in my opinion, the better way. It's less costly, uh, less invasive. And I have heard of stories from individuals, such as a dental hygienist um, in her own office, who um, helped her dentist um, do sinus lifts okay and uh, a lot of those patients came back with sinus issues sinus issues okay because anytime you're kind of like getting into the sinus cavity and an implant is just slightly going into that cavity um, there can be issues uh, long-term issues uh, <clears throat> now I guess it depends on who's doing it as well but personally, um, if I can go with zygomatic implants versus a sinus lift and bone grafting, I will. Another reason why I prefer zygomatic implants is because you get it and then that's it. Whereas with sinus lifts and bone grafting, you have to go back and travel multiple times to get multiple bone grafts done. And it's more time consuming, my more financially consuming. Um, so th these are your two options when you have no bone in your mouth and or your teeth are falling out and um, maybe you do have bone in your mouth, but you're looking at your whole mouth needs to go. So who are you going to go to? Um, when I was down at this clinic, it is called New Teeth Now by, um, and I went to go and see Dr. Uh, David Kirkpatrick. Uh, the nurses in there were incredible. Uh, the establishment was incredible. Um, everything was like really amazing. Now I'm sure somebody can go off to Mexico or go anywhere and say that. Um, but I personally was not willing to risk that. Uh, I wanted somebody that does this often, that knows what they're doing, that's been doing this for years. Um, <clears throat> because, you know, over time you troubleshoot any issues that you're having and you perfect it, right? Uh, like this is a one-shot deal. When you're having um, screws implanted into your jaws, you don't want to go, whoops, and then have to go and get that fixed and uh, getting bone grafting in those locations because you went to the wrong person. <clears throat> so what I found when I went down to Lakeland, uh, Florida is that they were very accommodating. They were super um, like just amazing people, like an amazing establishment. And uh, it, Lakeland is located in between Orlando and Tampa. So I flew into Tampa. I stayed um, at St. Pete's right on the beach, which was a bit too far away. I kind of wish I'd, you know, been closer to the clinic, but I was like, oh, I'm gonna go to the beach. Uh, no, you're not, Kristen. You're not going to the beach. You're gonna lay in bed and relax <laughs> and rest and recover. So, <clears throat> so when I called them, I would ask qu uh, questions. I uh, also noticed that they were doing these webinars <clears throat> which is them promoting themselves. They have a YouTube channel, New Teeth Now. They have a um, they have an, an Instagram account as well under the Face Doc with uh, Dr. Kirkpatrick, and uh, I'll put all the links below this video as well, so you can check them out. And um, there is a difference between you know going down to the south versus uh, you know say California or Las Vegas. Those were the other options that I was looking into. the The main red flags that I had was other uh, surgeons were saying, "Oh, you can go home after two days." I'm like, I don't think you can go home after two days. Like, no. That's not resonating with me. I was so leveled uh, personally 
I'm a little bit of a delicate flower. I was so leveled for three weeks that there was no way I could have gotten on a plane. Uh, absolutely not. But again, it depends on how many extractions you have. Are you one that tolerates pain really good? Do you usually have inflammation or not um, with procedures? Uh, so, but I had all 28 teeth extracted, okay? Um, so all on four is what they will describe when you have four implants put at an angle at the bottom into your chin or your jaw, okay? And then you'll have four at an angle uh, located up in your upper, okay? And then when you really don't have any bone, um, they can put anywhere from one up to four, okay, up into your cheekbone. So you might need just one, depending if there's bone loss over here, or you might need two, or you might need four. Uh, some people are born and they are unable to keep their teeth and their teeth fall out at a very young age. So uh, I was following a young lady that was going down to new teeth now. And she had no teeth since the, like age eight and she was wearing dentures her entire life. And then uh, she had this opportunity to uh, get psychomatic implants and she had four uh, because she really had no bone left after wearing dentures. So that's the issue with dentures. Number one, they're made out of acrylic, okay? And acrylic absorbs bacteria and stains. So it's harder to keep them clean. Um, sometimes this is a, probably a rare thing, but I've seen people get a yeast infection in their mouth because of the, the acrylic. Um, I always knew I did not want acrylic in my mouth. I always knew that. I was like, if I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna live with this for the rest of my life, it's not gonna be with acrylic. Uh, so this, this uh, clinic, New Teeth Now, only does uh, zirconia. It's like dr test driving a Lamborghini versus a Pinto, in my opinion. And right after surgery, they'll put you in acrylic because it's lightweight and you're like, you know, you don't want anything too heavy duty in your mouth. So you get acrylic right after surgery. Um, if you're a far distance away from Lakeland, they're now putting their patients in with zirconia. Thank God. I was so happy to hear that when he told me. I was like, thank God. <laughs> um, so, and then here's the kicker. Are they being upfront and answering all your questions? Are they being upfront and, and telling you the price tag? Okay, those are the questions that you wanna ask yourself. And the second thing is, do you only get one set of teeth and then they send you away after two days? Or do you go back and get a second set of teeth? I thought that was so annoying at first. I was like, why do I have to fly back down there in six months after surgery to get another pair of teeth? Why? Uh, but the reality is that when you have all your teeth removed and you've got implants put in, you have shrinkage, okay? You'll have the bone shrink back. That's what happens when, when teeth get popped out of your jaw. The bone shrinks back. The neighboring teeth potentially can become loose over time right? So picture your whole mouth getting uh, re revamped. Uh, so if you're only going to get one set of teeth and they're going to send you packing, you need to go somewhere else, plain and simple, because I'm already noticing some sinking in, okay? And it's been three months. I have three months left to go. And then I'm going to go back and get this done up the way, exactly tweak it the way I want it, how my teeth look. This set is meant for recovery, okay? And it looks pretty friggin' amazing, I'd say. And this is just for recovery. Um, so it'll be a little bit smoother uh, on the inside. It'll allow me probably to talk a little bit smoother. But this is for after surgery. So if the place that you're going to doesn't give you a second set of teeth six months after, I wouldn't go there. Because you will have a sunken in look 
and it's not going to be attractive. At some point, you're going to have to spend probably another $12,000 at least on another set of teeth to fill out your face more because your face will shrink back. And at first I was so annoyed by that, that I had to go back down there and spend more money to get this done. But the reality is this is for the rest of my life and I don't want to have a total sunken in face. Um, the other things that I was really questioning when I went to this place that I was wrong about, by the way, you go in, they meet you, they tell you what they can do, super nice. And I felt really good with Dr. Kirkpatrick. This man steps in and takes care of stuff like nobody's business. He can take care of different things and multitask and he's like on it, like so on it. It's unbelievable. Um, he's uh, very, like there's no, there's no pretentiousness and there's no fakeness. There's no ego at all, like at all. It's just, this is what it is. And this is information. It's just information given to you. So you go in on the first day, they meet with you. They tell you everything. You sign off on it. Um, then you get a day in between. You give them the funds, which I'm going to talk about. The next uh, day, uh, you go in and they start getting you ready uh, for the procedure. You go right in. I swear to God, I must have had like six nurses or six individuals in the room. One, uh, and they, said, uh, they put you completely under. Uh, I don't want to be put down halfway. Uh, you know, like you're laying there, potentially stuff falling where I want to be out. Like that's the way to go with this, okay? So they have people watching over you big time. You have to go through and get some blood work done and then they'll look at your blood work and then they'll decide if you're even ready and capable for surgery. Okay, that's how detailed these people are. They're not just going, oh sure, we'll take you, no problem. Like what if you have diabetes? What if you have high blood pressure? What if you have, so they're making sure that you're all good before you even go in for surgery. That's how detailed they are. Like. They're like perfect. Um, <clears throat> so you get you get put to, put under, and then you come out. Uh, when I came out, it wasn't a pretty time for me. <clears throat> but again, I had twenty eight extractions. I had like all of my gums were just not in a good place. I mean, I was going in for periodontal cleanings every three months just to cope. And um, so, but again, what happened is Dr. Kirkpatrick got in there, took care of my pain because the pain meds weren't working and he did it a different way. And I was in a lot better position after that. Okay, so um, basically put, uh, <clears throat> some people think, oh, yeah, I'll go home and it's no big deal. You need to rest. Like, I'm sure some people are maybe better at bouncing back than others, but um, this surgeon expects you back in the office seven days after surgery and then 30 days after surgery, okay? So I just spent the whole month down in Florida. I was like, oh, I'll just spend the whole month. So you think, well, that's a lot of visits with the surgeon. Yeah, but if anything goes wrong, do you wanna be back home or would you prefer to have this surgeon right ready to help you. I didn't see anything go wrong with me. I wasn't able to take the antibiotics. Um, other people will be. Um, major intensive oral rinse. It's like a mouthwash and it just disinfects everything. Like you can, it's just unbelievable. Like it's the strongest stuff I've ever had. But again, you wanna make sure that there's gonna be no problems because if you have, say, an infection brewing or, you know, implant failure, uh, you want to be near a surgeon. That's where you want to be. You don't want to be back home, <laughs> okay? Now, nothing went wrong, and I'm sure it's just for precautions because everything they do is so detailed. They've been doing this for a very long time, and they know what they're doing, like they just do. 
it was, it was very apparent to me. And I asked them a ton of questions. Um, and they have people that are interested in coming from New Zealand, uh, Canada, all over the place. <clears throat> so uh, after my 30 day visit, uh, I got into these teeth, okay? And what a difference. Like now I can see it. Acrylic versus zirconia. Big difference. You can't break these. They're practically indestructible. He said maybe if you got in a car accident and or, you know, with major facial trauma, they might break then. But otherwise, you can't break zirconia. Uh, bacteria does not stick to zirconia nearly as much. Um, they don't stain. I haven't seen any staining at all. You get to pick your color. You get to pick everything. But I knew that these were going to be temporary and I knew that I was going to go in and get my permanence at the six month mark. And boy, am I glad I went to this surgeon. Like he, he everything's so detailed and so you don't understand what they're asking of you in the beginning. But then as you go along on this journey, you understand the importance of what they're requesting of you. It is a commitment. It is a commitment to go back down um, or go and see them at the six month mark. But personally, I want to have teeth that fill out my face when everything shrunk back, right? So if you only get one set of teeth, it ain't gonna fly, not in my opinion, no. So these are the, this is what I experienced uh, down in Florida. Um, I have 10 implants placed in my jaws and two with two of them uh, up here. So a total of 10 out of the 10, I have two up in my cheekbones. Okay. Bypassing my sinuses. Again, it's, um, you're not going back for multiple visits with bone grafting and sinus lifts and you're not paying more to get bone grafting and sinus lifts. Other surgeons that I went to, they're like, we're just going to do the bone grafting and sinus lifts. I'm like, mm -hmm, nope. So the other thing is with uh, this new teeth now uh, clinic down in Lakeland, Florida, is they're, they're doing like multiple people a day, um, multiple people a day. Uh, so and they have a, a specific nurse to each person who watches over you. Uh, and you come into a recovery room, they give you this like uh, yummy gelato ice cream to kind of get your energy back. And then they scan your face again, make sure the implants are looking good, make sure your pain level's under control. Um, and then pretty much an hour after that, you're heading where you're heading. They prefer that you have someone come with you for this procedure and you know they're with you at the Airbnb or the hotel that you're staying at uh, watching over you but some people have not they don't have that so what do you do you go down by yourself and they look and watch over you extra. Um, I've watched several videos from people that have posted their own testimonials on their own YouTube, cha YouTube channels uh, separate from New Teeth Now YouTube channel and they say the same thing. They're saying the same thing I'm saying. So it's, they just had an easier recovery than I did. <laughs> they were like, I didn't feel any pain. I took no narcotics and I basically <sighs> felt nothing. And I went home after seven days and then I flew back at 30 day mark. I'm like, wow, <laughs> must be nice. <laughs> But a lot of people just don't have any pain after this. I was not one of those people. It was a rough six days, seven days after surgery for me. And then it just gradually got better and better and better. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm going to talk about cost. Okay. Um, they have a web, they have these little webinars that they put on. And if you're going to take the time to sit, and watch it and get information and then you get to type your questions and then they answer all your questions so it's a win-win-win and then at the very end of the webinar uh, and I'm not sure if this is completed all the time but those who watch the webinar will receive five thousand dollars off okay so that's a pretty big savings five thousand dollars off 
which I thought was pretty cool. I got all my questions answered. I got to watch this and you're going to give me $5,000. Okay. <laughs> like, sounds great. So after you watch the webinar and you see the price point, then you can call them and arrange to have a consultation over the phone and they're going to list out everything and tell you everything you know when i go back down at the six month mark to get my permanent teeth put in they're saying you could be here up to a month uh no i won't be <laughs> but the the reality is they can't tell you you'll be gone in a week because you you might keep making changes to your teeth no no i like this no no i like that no 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 so they say a roughly a month but the truth is you're gonna work hand in hand with these people. They have your teeth uh, all in their computer system, but they have to say a month, okay? It's not going to be a month. Now, when you get the procedure done, you have to be there with Dr. Kirkpatrick. There's another surgeon, two other surgeons now actually that work at the clinic. Their timelines are different than Dr. Kirkpatrick's, but seven days out, 30 days out you have to be there with Dr. Kirkpatrick because he wants to watch over you and make sure you're taken care of, which I appreciate. I, I'm okay with that. So when you go through the webinar, you're going to see all of your answers being, all, all your questions being answered and more answers that you didn't even know you had <clears throat> been interested in. But ultimately, it really came down to, uh, for me, the cost was forty, just over $46,000, okay? So it would have been just over $51,000 to have it completed. And you got to think, well, what the heck am I paying for? Oh, you're paying. You're paying for a high-end clinic with surgeons that have been doing this for years, over 15 years well over um, one surgeon there I think has been doing it for longer than that uh, you're paying for your first set of acrylic then they take you out of that then they're gonna put you in zirconia or acrylic if you're from a further distance away it's gonna be a zirconia there's your second set of teeth then you go back at six months and you're gonna get your permanent set of, so you're going through three sets of teeth just for your comfort and to make sure that everything's healing properly. Um, one thing they suggest, and I noticed that with other surgeons, they're like, you can just bite into an apple after surgery. If you wanna eat steak, you go right ahead. And something in me just didn't resonate with that. I'm like, I'm gonna get my, my jaws fully loaded with implants and I'm just gonna go and eat an apple or I'm just gonna go bite into, you know, uh, something didn't resonate with me with that. Like, shouldn't we let the bone integrate around the implant and fully heal before we go eating a steak? I don't know. Uh, for me, uh, implant failure is not an option. So for me, uh, when this clinic tells me, you know, eat softer foods, we're not eating baby food, but we're, we're not going to go and, you know, bite into a steak and chew it down. I could if I wanted to by the way, but I won't. So they're asking you to do that for six months to allow the implants to properly heal in, into your jaws, to allow the bone to fuse and heal around the implant, which kind of makes sense to me. If you're gonna go put a Corvette in your mouth, maybe you should make sure that it lasts, you know. Um, I use a water pick. I use a Sonicare uh, toothbrush. This is all given to you as well. Uh, after procedure and they tell you the type of uh, mouthwash I use Listerine non-alcoholic uh, Listerine because Listerine with alcohol dries out your mouth really intensively so um, you really want to make sure you're not having uh, mouthwash with alcohol but overall this this uh, overall was like a, an 11 out of 10 for me. It was by far the best uh, option. <clears throat> he had a patient, and you can see this if you, um, the real face doc is where you're gonna go on Instagram to see all his pictures. And he even shows like some graphic stuff too. 
but he had a, a patient come in from Colombia. They had gone to Colombia, they went and got the zygomatic implants, but the person who placed the implants didn't know what they were doing in Colombia. So the implants were placed so far back, they were practically touching the friggin' ears, okay, inside the, they were like this. So we had to take them out, put in some bone grafting, um, and then put her in dentures. And she had to heal, and then we'll see in eight months. Hopefully, we can do some, something for you then. But, like, I'm not willing to risk my face to get a deal somewhere. Uh, $5,000 off was a pretty significant deal for me. And if you're in my position, you're you're completely lost for hope. Just, you know, really ask for help from your team and really ask for what you want and then hang back and wait for the answer to come and the solution to come because it does it will i waited seven years and i'm here i made it and uh i'm just really really thankful really thankful to be in this position now why would someone get all on four versus dentures okay <clears throat> Number one, dentures can be made out of porcelain or they can be made out of uh, acrylic. Acrylic are really easy to break. Porcelain is not as easy to break. Um, back when I had my original teeth, I fell down one time and landed on my tooth and busted in half. So my front tooth, back in my old videos, um, was porcelain. Porcelain only lasted maybe 11 years, maybe 15 years, and then it would break. Uh, Dr. Kirkpatrick says he doesn't know how long zirconia teeth will make it for because he doesn't see zirconia teeth breaking yet. So it's at least 15 years, 15 to 20 years. So he, he rarely, I don't even think he does, see zirconia teeth break. Okay. Um, they do have a two-year warranty at this location um, so that you can go get and also if you go back and you get your teeth cleaned the teeth cleanings are free okay so they're really throwing a lot of stuff in here to make you make sure you're taken care of they're really they want to make sure you're taken care of so you're looking at uh, you know free teeth cleaning two-year warranty but anybody that's kind of shuffling you out the door after two days, that only gives you one set of teeth, um, you really need to question that. And how many of these are they doing in a week? How many are you doing? How often do you do this procedure? That's what I want to know. Okay, so with dentures, dentures sit right on your jawbone. And as you're chewing and talking over years, that can wear down your bone even further. And it gets to the point where, and you'll see this, um, you will see this uh, online, certain patients were then coming down to Lakeland to have what I got done because they didn't have any bone left and their denture was not staying in place. Even with implants placed uh, to hold the denture in place, the bone had deteriorated to the point where their options were running thin. So where do you go? Where do you go when you have no bone? Uh, so, you know, there's two options. You can get uh, the sticky polydent under your dentures to hold it in place or implants. I would go implants. I go implants any day, all day, any day, all day. Okay. But again, like where I am located, when I was calling around, okay, uh, the price tag was more than it, me flying down to Lakeland. And Lakeland is a small community, well, smaller, I would say 150,000 people, maybe 200,000. And so if they go in for surgery, if you go in for surgery down there and they're looking at your jaw and they're like, oh, we can maybe put in uh, one or two extra implants, they do and they don't charge you. They don't charge you for 
Here, it's like $3,000 per implant and you're gonna pay every single one. And you're gonna pay $120 for every single tooth extraction, okay? So down there, they just have uh, a large uh, facility, larger, and they just do everything in-house. And if, an, uh, an, if a you need an extra dental implant, they put it in and so be it. <clears throat> so some people I've heard have had up to 12 in their mouth. I have 10. Some people only need eight because they have lots of bones, so they don't need a zygomatic implant. And, you know, for me, what I realized is um, dentures, they fit up under, right, really tight. So it might fill out your face a little bit better. But then I'm like, do I want dentures? Do I want dentures? That's the question. And if it's already bone loss and the dentures ramming on my bone, creating more bone loss, that's going to be a problem down the road. It's more cost effective, but again, I wouldn't go acrylic. If you can go porcelain, that's the way I would go so that you don't have staining and you don't have um, bacteria build up uh, through the teeth. <coughs> it has been amazing so amazing if more of us don't leave reviews like this and talk about this these kinds of experiences people won't know right so i was on youtube watching two other women on their own personal youtube channels talking about their experience they're also on new teeth now talking about their experience as well i was so uh re it was such a hard recovery for me that i wasn't going to be talking about my experience after surgery I was like no way <laughs> I can't even deal right now I can barely get out of bed <laughs> I don't think they want me on camera like this <laughs> but I'm here on my YouTube channel um, and this is where I will post this as well to talk about this experience because it it's important that people who need this find the right surgeon and when I was talking to one of the nurses in the surgical room um, I was talking about the different surgeons that I had investigated. Um, <clears throat> and she said, you know, out of all of, uh, North America, she's like, there's maybe 20 that can do this procedure and do it good. And two of them work in this clinic. And she has been a nurse in this clinic for like 20, 25 years. She was probably about 60. She had been there and seen it all. So when she said that, I was like, man, like, and you could just see, like, they just took care of things really quickly and made sure you were comfortable and made sure that, uh, like, confidence is key. You only have one face and one shot at this, right? So does anybody have any questions that they want to ask? Um, you know what's really nice? I'm not in chronic pain anymore. <laughs> Chronic periodontal pain, gum infection, inflammation. Oh, my whole body feels uh, more energy, uplifted, happier. Um, I feel, I do feel a lot better. I, um, I, I feel like uh, a total relief, to be honest. After, right after when they pulled me out of surgery, I was like, oh, my lower jaw really hurts. Um, so he took care of the pain. And then I was like, it still kind of hurts. I'm, I'm such a baby. But the truth is, uh, she said, well, did you notice a lot of the gum was infected in these areas down here? And I said, yes. And she goes, that, that can be common uh, after surgery. You may notice that it kind of is more achy in the areas where you have the infection. So where do they take the gum from? Because you're not going to have enough gum to cover the wound site and around the implants. Mm -mm, you're not. They're going to remove all the infected gum. They're going to just gently level the bone, just gently, okay? Not overboard. Some patients have heard the doctor leveled the bone too much. So we don't want to do that either. So just leveling it a little bit. 
And then they have uh, skin grafting that they place along your jaw in between and around all over uh, where the implants are, okay? So if you're wondering about that, uh, you get gum pretty much put in there for you. It was pretty incredible. It really was. When you're looking at 20 teeth being taken out and uh, just, it, you really have to go to the right place. It's so imperative. Uh, other places are promoting that, oh, um, $32,000, come on down, you know, Las Vegas. But like, I don't get looked after after two days. I can go home and I can go and chew anything. Like it just wasn't adding up and I only get one set of teeth, which at first I was like, whatever. But now that I'm on the flip side of this, you need another set made for you six months down the road. Otherwise you will have a sunken in appearance and it ain't gonna cut it. And like I said, by the end of this, I've gone through three sets of teeth with the third set being my final set. Um, you know, it's just really, really important. Yes, they do. There are, uh, uh, right through their website, they have three, three or four different, um, companies that are listed that can be accessed to get the funds to, um, have this, uh, taken care of. So yes, insurance companies, yes. If you go to, uh, I think it's newteethnow.com, but again, I'm going to put all of the uh, information below this video for you guys. So you can go and check it out on Instagram, YouTube, their website. Just recently, they have a new surgeon that's on staff as well. When you go in, they have this huge like theater for all of your loved ones who are waiting for you. And they have this huge, huge uh screen it's like a movie theater it's a little mini movie theater and you and you get to sit and relax and watch tv while while you're waiting for your loved ones right and on the ground level is where they will uh visit you and check you out and change your teeth and then on the back side is where they do the sur surgical procedures. So it's all on the one level. And then up top is who you will go and see and talk about, you know, how you how you want your teeth to look. And it's all the professionals that just work on your teeth. And these, um, these zirconia teeth are built out of one block and they take a mold of your jaw they know how you want your teeth looking they know the color and they do it like a digital and they just grind it out and these are so smooth in my mouth like you wouldn't believe it's like a baby's butt i'm not kidding it gets that smooth uh whereas these are the acrylic weren't as smooth as these um these are just more solid and amazing ah oh yeah oh yeah like you had one implant done it drove you nuts yeah having all your teeth extracted with infection having gum grafting and and the beautiful thing is i'm i don't have to worry about bone grafting because if i did if I didn't have enough bone, I would have to go back and forth, back and forth for them to build the bone up each time. It would be way more costly. But like I said, I thought I had very little bone in my mouth, but other people have half the amount that I do and they are still able to pl place the implants, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like chronic gum, uh, you have to think like, this is what you'll learn during this webinar. If you have chronic infection in your mouth, and a lot of other people have periodontal disease, and they can't afford to go in and get deep periodontal cleanings every three months like I did. Sometimes it was two and a half months. So I was in, they'd have to freeze my entire face, and then they go down under the gum line and clean it out to the point of no return. 
Uh, and then I would take the whole day to recover, sometimes several days uh, to recover from that kind of deep cleaning. And that was just to keep my teeth in my mouth. I had bonding. I had little pieces of metal and bonding holding my teeth together on the inside. Uh, just, you know, tying, tying, just waiting for time to go by and buying time until I could get this done. Okay, so you think people with periodontal disease, they don't have the resources to go in and get a periodontal cleaning at 200 and some dollars every time, okay? That's the only way you're going to keep your teeth in your mouth if you have periodontal disease over time. You need periodontal cleaning, not a regular cleaning. Uh, you need a periodontal cleaning that's gonna go up under the gum line uh, to clean it all out. And then it helps your teeth actually be, feel more stable for a time. And then you go back in and get it done again. And some patients will go in and get those cleanings done every six months. And then the severe cases like myself will be every three months. The old way that they used to do implants and the same way that my periodontist offers uh, to do implants is bone grafting and then one implant into every socket where every tooth is and then screw a tooth in place so you would have 28 implants in your jaws after having bone grafting that's the old school way of doing it no one can afford a hundred thousand plus dollars to have that done and it makes no sense to get that done because if you already have bone loss uh, to build that up it's so invasive and costly this is the way to go. Okay, I'm going to show you guys up under my gum line so you can see what it looks like, okay? Uh, wow, there you go, Renata. There you go. You know. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Every three months. Okay, so you guys are buying time. Um, mine just kind of went rapidly. So even, I probably could have had my teeth out seven years ago. So I was just buying time. And then of course they do a pan x-ray of your face to make sure that the bone, so I'd stopped the bone loss, but the gums were still still going, um, still inflamed. I was just holding on, you know, uh, some of these teeth back here had no bone around them. The only thing that was holding that tooth in place was uh, bonding. And I knew if I lost one tooth, then the neighboring teeth the bone would go so softer uh, and those neighboring teeth would get loose. So I knew it would be a domino effect if I lost one tooth. That's what I came to realize. Okay, so these are zirconia, okay? There, there's gonna be some changes that I make to these uh, in the future uh, to do it the way I like it. But what you'll notice over time is You'll have, okay, you're going to have more of a gap in between the, the bridge and your jaw. And that's why you need a second set of teeth made six months after surgery. Because this gap is going to get bigger. Okay. It's not too bad, actually. Up top is not that bad, actually. Um, and down here, the gap is getting to you a little bit more. So you will need a second set of teeth made. But you'll see that the white zirconia carries down and covers over the implant. See? Down here. Which I think is really cool. No one else is doing this. I haven't seen it with any other surgeon. So I'm like, God, these people have thought of everything. Like literally everything. They carried the zirconia down to cover over the implant for extra protection and probably to keep, you know, bacteria and such out while everything's healing. So I just thought, oh my God, it's so cool. Okay, one, two, three, four. There you go, four implants in my jaw. I got six loaded up here with two in my in my uh, cheekbones, but uh, mm -hmm. when you have your teeth taken out, your bone will shrink 
everything's going to shrink back like a prune. So it doesn't matter who you are, when you have all your teeth taken out, that's why you see those people with their concaved mouths because the teeth, the bone is disappearing. This will fill your face back up and you'll need a second uh, set made for you. It's just how, it's, how it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And when I'm on the phone having a consultation with someone, like I'm firing off multiple different questions and if they hesitate or they don't know the answer, red flag, okay? Uh, like somebody who's gonna sit there and put up with me and be patient and and be um, just awesome and, and positive, that's what I'm looking for and that's what you will get at this place. They don't hold back at all. They know the answer to everything because you guys know me, <laughs> okay? Like I research things. I will go to, actually I sent off my scan of my face to four different places. I spent $200 getting four scans put and then I mailed them off and then I wait. And uh, so like, I research like crazy for the right place because like you only have one face, right? It's your face. It's not just about, uh, it's, just, it's the ultimate medical procedure for talking, chewing, eating, breathing. Like when you have periodontal disease and it's really inflamed, one of the things you'll learn from the webinar is as you're breathing in, you're breathing that bacteria into your lungs, okay? Not healthy, not good long-term, just not good. And that can produce other issues in the body, which you'll learn at the webinar. Um, so long-term having periodontal disease and not having this taken care of is just not an option, you know? So especially when you run out of bone, what do you do? Thank God we have this in this day of age. We can complain about the price tag all we want, but you know, a hundred years ago, there would have been no options for me. I would have been stuck with no teeth, eating soft food, and that would have been my life forever. So ultimately at the end of the day, at least we have this available for us. And thank God for that. So now it's just a matter of putting it out to your team and saying, let's get this rope ball rolling and um, just wait for the, for the pivot and for the answer to come. And then one day you'll be like me where you will be like, wow, I'm finally going in and I'm finally getting it done. Cause that day will come. It will come. Rest assured of that. And I didn't have the answer seven years ago, but I did the best that I could over the past seven years. And then off I went. Uh, it's amazing how things pivot. All right, well, I hope this answered all of your questions. A uh, big difference between uh, uh, dentures versus bridges supported by dental implants. Big difference. These do not touch my bone. Therefore, they will not wear down my bone over time. Okay, and the percentage of these as far as the success rate with uh, with zygomatic implants in your cheekbones, the success rate is in the high 90s, high 90%, okay? So you're looking at uh, really high success rate. And uh, the beauty of it is, is they go in your mouth, you have teeth right away, you're out the door, uh, and you can go and live your life and you don't have to go back and forth and get bone grafting done. There is no bone grafting done. You've lost your bone, it's gone. So what do you do? You go down to New Teeth Now in Lakeland, Florida, and you get these suckers loaded in. And if they can do it for me, man, they're definitely gonna do it for everybody because I thought I had no bone left. So yeah. All right, everyone, I hope this helps. I'm gonna put all the contact information uh, below this video so that you can get researching. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below and I'll get back to your questions, okay? Bye. <laughs>